Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Blessed Frederick Ozenham Parish. Thank you for joining us on the 15th Sunday of Ordinary Time as we gather for, as one family for our Eucharistic celebration. A special welcome to any who are new to our parish or visiting us today. We wish to gratefully acknowledge and thank all of our dedicated volunteers, without whom this Mass and a live streaming of this Mass would not be possible. Please rise. This Mass is being offered for the repose of the soul of Tisa, or Tisa Diaz. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our celebration on this 15th Sunday in Ordinary Time, a special welcome to those who are joining, joining us virtually and in spirit through the live stream. Before we begin, let us pause for a moment of silence, call to mind our sins, and ask for the Lord's pardon and mercy. We were created by you, Lord have mercy. We were created through you, Christ have mercy. We were created for you, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O oh God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path, give all who for the faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ, 
and strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Amos. Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, said to Amos, O seer, go, flee away to the land of Judah, earn your bread there, and prophesy there. But never again prophesy at Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary, and it is a temple of the kingdom. Then Amos answered Amaziah, I am no prophet, nor prophet's son, but I am a herdsman, and a dresser of sycamore trees. And the Lord took me from following the flock. And the Lord said to me, Go, prophesy to my people Israel. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual being in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption to sonship as, as his own through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In Christ, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he lavished upon us. With all wisdom and insight, God has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ, as a plan for the fullness of time, to gather up all things in Christ, 
things in heaven and things on earth. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. Jesus said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So the twelve went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed many with oil, and anointed many with oil who were sick and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. Today's Gospel reminds me of the last truly great movie that I saw, which in my opinion was the best film of 2019 and one of the best war films of all time. I'm referring to the highly acclaimed war epic called 1917. It should have won Best Picture at the 2020 Oscars, but it lost out to Parasite, which although a pretty good movie, I didn't feel was at the same level as 1917. Because apart from its amazing cinematography and its brilliant editing, 1917 had things I rarely see in movies these days. Things like moments of sheer grace, moments of great beauty, and moments of pure, unselfish love. And this is quite an achievement, especially because something like grace is a difficult thing to depict on film. For those unfamiliar with it, 1917 is the story of two soldiers during the height of the First World War who are sent on a journey to deliver a critical message that could save hundreds of lives. It's a journey filled with all sorts of dangers and threats, all sorts of temptations and distractions, as well as many opportunities to be selfish or selfless. And the director, Sam Mendes, does a, great, does a brilliant job of making us feel that we are all part of the journey that these two soldiers are on. As we experience the tremendous weight of their mission, the great urgency of their race against time to deliver the message, and the absolute fear and anxiety they undergo along the way. Apart from that, the movie itself is a great analogy for life in general, because our lives are also a journey, a mission, and a quest of sorts, filled with many dangers and threats to our spiritual health, filled with many temptations and distractions, filled with countless opportunities to be selfish or selfless. And the movie is also a great analogy for the Christian life in general, because as followers of Christ, we are also on a quest to deliver a critical message. And whether we realize it or not, how we live our lives and everything we say and do 
is sending a message to everyone that we encounter. This is something that I became even more keenly aware of as a priest. For as a priest, I realized that everything I say and do will either lead people closer to Christ or farther away from him. And so there are times, like the soldiers in 1917, I feel the tremendous weight of that responsibility and that mission, even though it's a weight that all Christians bear as ambassadors of Christ and not just the clergy. But the movie 1917 is not only a great analogy for the Christian life, it has a lot in common with today's gospel. For just like the disciples in today's gospel, these soldiers were also sent on their mission in a group of two. They were also sent on their journey with very little positions to, possessions to take with them. And they were also sent to deliver a critical and life-saving message. And so just as the soldiers in 1917 were sent, today's gospel is also about being sent, being sent to deliver God's message of salvation to those who truly need it. But for this very critical mission, Jesus commands the disciples to take nothing with them, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts. I used to think that this was kind of a strange thing for Jesus to ask of them, especially since he was preparing them for what would be their God-given mission in life, to continue the saving work of the Messiah and to spread the good news of God's kingdom. So it never used to make sense to me that Jesus would send the apostles out into the world for this very important mission and insist that they take almost nothing with them, which in my mind would make the mission even harder for them to accomplish. But what Jesus is trying to teach his disciples is that in order to carry out this very important mission, they need to rely on God himself and not their own resources and that they need to let go of their attachments and their reliance and their reliance upon things that instead they need to trust in God's providence and to let go of their dependence upon anything that is not God himself and this is not only good advice for 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 our mission as Christians but for how we live our lives because as we journey through life we can develop all sorts of attachments but these attachments can enslave us and get in the way of our relationship with God and our dependence upon him as we are tempted to put our trust in things rather than in God himself. And so attachments and dependence, and dependence upon things other than God can become unnecessary baggage that weighs us down and prevents us from being all that God wants us to be and from doing all that God wants us to do. Because just like the disciples in today's gospel, we are also called to be instruments of God's salvation, to continue the saving work that Jesus began, and to deliver his life-changing life message to others. But in, or in order to do this work that God has get, called us to do, we need to rely on him and him alone, and attachments can get in the way of that. And so today, Jesus invites us to surrender our attachments and our dependence upon things and to rely on God and God alone, not only for the mission he has given us, but throughout all of life in general. Because our attachment to things can become unhealthy and burdensome and prevent us from living life to the full. And it's not necessarily that the things we're attached to are bad in and of themselves, but our attachment to these things can be bad if we rely on them more than God, if we put our trust in them rather than in God. Because even really good things can become an unhealthy attachment. And it's not only attachment to things that can, all, that can be unhealthy, but attachment to other people, attachment to our own way of seeing things, attachment to getting our own way, attachment to how we think things should be, even attachment to what we think God should be doing for us and for others. All these can be attachments and all these can become unnecessary baggage that holds us down, enslaves us, and prevents us from following Christ, from continuing his saving work, and from making the most out of life. 
Because when our Lord asks us to do something, although it may challenge us, it's never to make our lives more miserable, but to help us lead richer, fuller, and more satisfying lives. The message that the soldiers in 1917 were sent to, del to, li to deliver is that a battalion of their fellow soldiers were walking into a deadly trap. And this too is similar to the gospel message that the disciples were sent to deliver. For the disciples were sent to let people know that in a sense they too were in danger of walking into a trap because the various entice enticements, pleasures, and distractions of this world can also be a trap, a dangerous trap that can lead us farther away from God. But the good news that the disciples were called to deliver and that we are also called to, to, to deliver is that Christ himself is far greater, far more desirable than all the enticements, all the pleasures, and all the distractions of the world combined. For Christ is not only the messenger of the good news, he himself is the good news. He is the good news message that we are called to deliver, and he is the good news message that we are called to live. And it is for this reason that we need to truly receive the good news message ourselves first and foremost before we can deliver this message to anyone else. In other words, we must strive to be filled with this message that is Christ himself, to eat, breathe, and sleep this message, so that as we journey through life, whomever we encounter will truly see and hear in us the good news message that is Christ himself, who is the answer to all our searching, the fulfillment of all our longing, and the ultimate goal in the mission that is our life. Amen. Now let us stand and profess our faith together in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Sisters and brothers, knowing that God's love is without conditions or boundaries, we bring our petitions before him with confidence as we pray. Loving God, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. For the church and all who work to proclaim the kingdom of God, we pray. For leaders of nations, that they may be prophets of justice and instruments of peace in our world, we pray. for healing and freedom from all that prevents us from living God's commandments of love. We pray for our parish of Blessed Frederick Osenham, that our community will continue to grow and thrive, both spiritually and physically, bringing to fruition our mission to build our new church in which to offer glory and praise to God. We pray for the sick and the suffering, 
that the Lord may fill them with his healing and loving presence. We pray. For our departed loved ones, that they may dwell in Christ's abundant love for all eternity. We pray. Loving Father, as you hear and answer our prayers, grant that we may know and accept your loving will in our lives. We entrust all our needs and intentions to you through our Blessed Mother, as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look upon the offerings of your church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that, when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth, he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with a company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim.
are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts. We have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son may be filled with this Holy Spirit and become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect 
especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with blessed Frederick Ozenam and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Francis, our Bishop, his assistant bishops, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you. At their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. <laughs> And now the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Power and the glory. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
couple of announcements. Uh, the 2023 financial statement is now available. If you would like a copy, please feel free to take one as you exit the school. It'll be on a table in the foyer as you exit. Uh, please just feel free to grab one if you would like a copy. Uh, as usual, we'll be selling tickets after all masses this weekend for the gala. As I mentioned, you can also get tickets online via our website. The early bird pricing of 200 will be in effect until late August. Also, uh, there is a prize if you buy, uh, you're eligible for an early bird draw. If you buy the ticket before late August, before the early bird deadline ends. And it's a one night executive stay for two at the Markham Hilton Suites. Woo. <laughs> Woo. No, no excitement there. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so it's, uh, it's a one night stay at the executive suite, at one of the executive suites. At the Markham Hilton, you'll be eligible for a draw if you buy your ticket early. Uh, also, we're asking if you or your employer would like to sponsor the gala, please get in touch with me directly. The more sponsorship we get, the more profitable the gala is. And if you want to donate a prize as well, please get in touch with me. Again, it should be brand new items, not things that are used or that you want to get rid of. Things, it should be things like brand new TVs, 85-inch 4K television. Um, uh, Nintendo Switches, uh, Taylor Swift tickets, um, a car, things like that. <laughs> things that people really want, okay? So if you have something to donate, please get in touch with me and let me know personally. I think that's it. Please stand for the closing prayer. Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O oh Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth now in the peace of Christ. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.
Prayer to St. Michael, St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Hope your rest of your weekend is a little cooler. And I uh, hope to see you again soon. God bless.